Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Robinson again, and we're continuing our studies. This time we are going on to our show number three of solving equations. We're getting ready for eighth grade mathematics. If you need help with your homework, there's Dial the Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380, Monday to Thursdays at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Give them a call. They're very good people. You can watch my YouTube videos. My channel name is Dan Robinson. Subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. Write us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Let us know what we can do to help you even more. Check out a new release, PKMS Math Prep 20. Very good movie. I think you'll like it. You can tweet us at DRobMath1. Don't forget to watch our show Math Time on Optimum Cable Vision at 4.30 to 5 p.m. on Tuesdays, channel 15, Optimum Cable. It's a good show. I think you'd like to see some of your friends and myself. If you want to study with me, you can write me at my email address, drobinson at peakskillschools.org. I'll be glad to send you a copy of a worksheet. That way you can get some more practice. All right, here's our agenda. We're going to do one-step equations, two-step equations with distribution, with fractions, then multi-step equations and variables on both sides. It's a lofty agenda, so we'll do as much as we can, and we'll definitely break it up into a couple parts. So let's get going. So one-step equations. So fill in the box to answer the question. If you remember a long, long time ago, when you were probably in the elementary school, they used to draw boxes. Uh, some number plus or minus uh, another number equals another number that was an equation and uh, this was simple because you had to guess what number it was but we took the guesswork out of it in secondary math we ended up subtracting the number or doing the additive inverse or whatever they told us to do additive inverse means opposite by the way and let's pull that out oh, and we did it on both sides of the equal sign so the opposite of plus 3 is minus 3. We did that to both sides of the equal sign. 10 minus 3 gave us 7, so the box would be equal to 7. So that was the equation. Later on, when you got a little older in mathematics, they changed the box to a box maybe with a letter in it, like an X. So you had to figure out what's the value of x. But this is pretty much the same thing. Again, you would use the additive inverse. So on both sides of the equal sign, to help you solve this equation. So the additive inverse means opposite. The opposite of plus 4 would be minus 4 on both sides. And I see I have a minus 3. So uh, let's fix that. So make that minus 4 on both sides. Minus 4. And uh, answer would be 6. Okay, so 6 plus uh, 4 is equal to 10. So, so let's, um, okay, glad I fixed that. So uh, x would equal to 6. So uh, basically it's the same. So that was a simple equation. So this is one for you to do. So what number minus 3 equals 10? Again, use the additive inverse on both sides. I think you should be able to figure that out. So hopefully you won't say 7, because 7 minus 3 is 4. So remember, use the opposite on both sides. All right, so I want you to note that the box is the variable, the unknown number that we were looking for. In algebra, we use the letters x, y, n, and any letter uh, that you would care to use. But basically, you relegated it to one of these three letters. So, uh, But we use letters in algebra. Additive inverse, as I mentioned, is the opposite of the operation. Add, the opposite of add is sub subtract. The opposite of subtract is uh, addition. So notice that's why they have the word add in there. Inverse means opposite by itself. Equation, that's a problem that has a equal sign in it. So uh, what would be cute is what do you call it when it doesn't have an equal sign in it? And we'll get to that a little bit later. All right, so let's go on to some more one-step type of problems. Um, 
to fill in the box with the answer of the equation here, we have 10 times 2, and I just want to note these are ways to write multiplication. The big dot is a multiplication decimal, 10 times 2, and here's another way to write 10 times 2 when you have a number next to a parenthesis that also implies multiply, and that's 10 times 2 as well. So the answer would be 20, of course. So these are just different ways to write multiplication, and I want to pay close attention to the parenthesis because that's going to be leading us up to something. So when you see a number next to parenthesis, that means multiply. But I want to introduce a fourth way that you should see implied multiplication is when you have a number next to a letter that also means multiply. So we don't see that until we get to uh, dealing with algebra. And the 3n equal 15, your 3 has a name. It's called the coefficient. That's the number next to the letter. The letter we s said was a variable. And, and, and it equals to 15. So 3 parenthesis and parenthesis equal 15 that's another way of saying three times some number equals 15 and we know that number would be five so that's a way i wanted to introduce you to it but let's go on and see how we deal with this solve for the n three parenthesis n parenthesis or three times a number equals 15 and i'm sure you can guess that but the steps are to divide both sides by three and then simplify so if I divide both sides by 3, the 3's will cancel down to 1, and 1 times n will be n, and 15 divided by 3 is equal to 5. So what we are using is not the additive inverse, but we're using something called the multiplicative inverse of both, uh, on both sides of the equal sign. In, mul in multiplicative inverse, we're using the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing. So we're using an inverse. So we're dividing both sides by the coefficient in, other, in order to s isolate the variable to get it by itself. So you might have seen that some time ago. So these are, again, one-step equations. Now I want to talk about uh, this. Uh, we want to fill in the box to answer the equation, 10 divided by 2. And more so, you're going to see in secondary math, the fraction bar, 10 over 2. And uh, I know this is an improper fraction, but we say 10 divided by 2 as well. So this is a fraction bar. So fractions are another way to write division. And 10 divided by 2, of course, is 5. So solve the equation for y. So 1 half, if we remember, parenthesis means multiply. So we're multiplying something times y to equal to 10. And if you said 5, half of 5 is 2.5. So it cannot be 5. So the steps are divide both sides by 1 half and then simplify. So we're going to divide by 1 half. So let me get my calculator for that. So I'm going to take 10 and divided by one half, one half. And if you remember my, the video on dividing fractions and whole numbers, check it out. So it's multiplied by the reciprocal. So that's how we get 20. So your calculator will help you out with that. So 20 is our answer for this one. So again, we use the multiplicative inverse on both sides of the equal sign. And I know you had a fraction here, so fractions are more so what we're dealing with in seventh grade math. So in sixth grade, you'll see a few of them, but get ready to see those more so. But the process is still the, still the same. So you mul use the multiplicative inverse on both sides of the equal sign. So this was a fraction, so we um, divided both sides, or you could multiply by the reciprocal is another way of saying it. All right, here we have solved for the value of y, equation for y, y over 2. And if you remember, I said it, this is the division problem. So what number divided by 2 is 10? So let's see. Steps multiply by 2. The reciprocal, I mean the, the multiplicative inverse, instead of dividing by 2, we're doing the opposite of divide, which is multiply. So we multiply by 2. What happens is that 2 cancels out. And we do that to both sides, 10 times 2, that'll give us 20. 
So this is just another way of writing the other question. Instead of having the one half, we can have the one not written, but this is uh, implied there. So one is the only coefficient you don't write. So you can put a one here and it'll look like that, but that's another way of writing it just in case they don't want to write the one. So, but still, we use the multiplicative inverse on both sides of the equal sign to solve our question. So I hope you're understanding what's going on. If you're not sure, write down your questions, write, a, write, write me a note, and I'll be glad to answer your email, maybe even make your study tutorial video. All right, let's go on to two-step equations. So we've mastered one step, so let's go on to two-step equations now. So you should have seen these hopefully in sixth grade. So for the answer and to, to, to the equation below, this is an equation. The equations have equal signs, we know. So 6n plus 2 equals 20. So the first thing we should do is use the additive inverse on both sides of the equal sign. Remember, that's the opposite of adding or subtracting. So we would subtract 2 from both sides. And after that, we would use the multiplicative inverse to get rid of the 6n. So let's press this. So we subtract the 2 from both sides. That'll cancel out the 2s. And 20 minus 2 is 18. Then we use the multiplicative inverse on both sides of the equal sign. So the opposite of multiplying by 6 would be dividing by 6. So the 6s will cancel out. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So the answer is 3. So this you should be familiar with from 6th grade. So I want to take it a step further. In 7th grade, we, deal, we dealt with fractional coefficients and having more fractions involved in our uh, examples. So it's still the same process. The solve for k, notice they use the letter k this time in the equation below, so that shouldn't bother you. They just use a different letter, so they're allowed to use whatever letter they want. So 3 fourths k minus 5 equals 10. So again, to use the additive inverse, the opposite of minus 5 would be plus 5. So we use that on the both sides. And then after that, we got to get rid of the uh, fractional coefficient. So we would divide both sides by the 3 fourths or multiply by the reciprocal. So let's take a look. So we added 5 to both sides. That'll give us 15. And then we would divide both sides by 3 fourths. And again, check out my video. That's multiplying by the reciprocal of the second number. So we have k is equal to 20. So there's your answer. And let's just check that just to make sure we were right. Let's clear that out of there. So we have 15 divided by 3 fourths. And that will give us 20. So it does check out. So let's keep moving and go on to our next question. So that was two step equations and now let's move on a little bit. Hopefully you understand what's going on. So let's go on a little bit deeper. So we've been doing a lot so far with one step, two step equations. Let's continue two step equation, this time with what's called distribution. Now I mentioned earlier, uh, equations have equal sign. Notice this is called an expression. What's the difference between an expression and an equation? No equal sign. So here we have our parenthesis, negative 8, parenthesis x minus 3. So a little bit of algebra here. We're expected to distribute the negative 8 or multiply the negative 8 times all of this stuff. And I'm going to ask you the reason why are we supposed to do that in a minute, but we're going to multiply the negative 8 times everything that's inside the parenthesis. That's our distributive property. So we take it one step at a time. Negative 8 is going to be multiplied by the x, and then negative 8 is going to be multiplied by the negative 3. So that's what it should look like when you demonstrate your work so you get full credit. So when you simplify it, negative 8 times x, well, remember there's an imaginary 1 here. You multiply your coefficients, and 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. And don't forget the x. And negative 8 times negative 3, that'll give you a positive 24. 
So your answer would be a binomial of negative 8x plus 24. So let's go into this a little bit deeper. That's called the distributive property, where a is some number being multiplied by b plus c, where ab plus ac would be your result. That also works in subtraction, a being multiplied by b minus c, where ab minus ac. Well, why is this true, Dr. Rob? All right, let's take a look at uh, this so we can see why is this true. Find the value of the following. Here we have 3 being multiplied by something. So let's put a number there. 3 being multiplied by 10. What's 3 times 10? And if you said 30, you're correct. So it equals 30. But I want to deal with this 10. I want to break that up into pieces. So let's break it up into what plus what equals 10. There are a lot of different choices. So I could say 8 plus 2. 8 plus 2 is 10. Notice I broke up the uh, 10 in the two, into the two parts. 8 plus 8 and a, 8 and a plus 2. Because that adds up to 10. And if I multiply it by 3, that'll give me 30. But notice if I distribute, like I did a minute ago, the 8 times the, the, the 3 times 8 and then the 3 times the plus 2, it'll look like this. 3 times 8 plus the 3 times the 2. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 6 is 30. Now, notice we had to multiply both parts by the 3. That's why it's important to distribute and multiply both parts of the inside factors or sums in order to get the total product that you're looking for. Because if you don't, you're not going to get it. If I only multiplied the 8 times the 3, I would get 24, and I would not get the uh, do anything with the 2, so I would be not getting the correct answer of 30, which I needed to. So that's why it's important to multiply both parts. So let's try that again. So I'm going to make believe uh, I'm separating the 10 into 4 plus 6. 4 plus 6 is equal to 10, and now let's distribute. So 3 times 4, that'll give me 12, and then 3 times 6. So 3 times 4, and plus 3 times 6, 12 plus 18. So 3 times 6 is 18, yeah, that's true, and 12 plus 18 is 30. So that does check out. So let's do one more time. Oh, 12 minus 2. Well, 12 minus 2, that's uh, 10, yeah. So, and I can do it with minus? Yeah, let's see. Well, let's distribute. 3 times 12, and then 3 times minus 2. So 3 times 12, and 3 times minus 2, or minus 3 times 2. And so 3 times 12 is 36. And minus 3 times 2 gives me a minus 6. So 36 minus 6, hey, that equals the 30. So it works with subtraction as well, because I had to make sure I had my 10 in the parenthesis. So it will work and give me 30 as well. That's interesting. Try this one. 1 plus 9. 1 plus 9, that equals 10. 3 times 1, and then 3 times plus 9. Well, 3 times 1, and 3 times plus 9. 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 9 is 27. 27 plus 3, hey, that is equal to 30. Wow, this is why the distributive property works so well. So let's try one more. Let's try this one. Whoa, big numbers, Dr. Rob. 3 times 20 minus 10. Well, what's 20 minus 10 equal to? Oh, 10, you're right. So I'm really saying 3 times 10 again, which is what I have up, up here on the top. So let's distribute. 3 times 20. And then I have to write 3 times minus 10. Well, 3 times 20. And then 3 times minus 10. Wow, 3 times 20, that's 60. And 3 minus 3 times 10, that's minus 30. And 60 minus 30 equals 30. So that's proof for us that the distributive property works for addition and subtraction, because every single one of those examples 
we got the same answer and we use different numbers to represent inside the parenthesis the inside number of 10. Interesting. All right, well, let's get into a little bit of algebraic equations. So we just did an expression, an equation a second ago, because it had an equal sign, but now we're dealing with algebraic equations. Algebraic equations deal with letters that are now introduced inside of our equations. So three parentheses, that means times, a number plus five equals negative two. So the first thing we should do, I would say rewrite the equation. Why? Because you don't want to mess it up and put something there and then not be able to discern what was there. So rewrite your equation. Second step, you got two outside here, so you have to distribute it to everything that's inside of the parenthesis. So that'll be two times the n and then two times the plus five. So let's distribute that. So two times the n and two times the plus five, and that is equal to negative two. And now we can simplify and solve the equation. So two times n, and remember there's a uh, imaginary one there, two times one is two, and, and two times five is 10. So we'll have two n plus 10 equals negative two. And then we just go on and solve n like we normally do, doing, using our additive inverse, subtract 10 from both sides, and um, the tens will cancel out. We'll bring down the two n, and negative 2 minus 10, if you remember my rules for subtraction, add the additive inverse of the second number. So negative 2 plus negative 10 gives us negative 12. And 2n equals negative 12. We use the multiplicative inverse, or in other words, divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 cancels out, and we'll, we'll have negative 2 divided by 2, and that'll give us n is equal to negative 6. So we just solved this for n, starting from a problem that gave us a distribution. So we had to use the distributive property in order to solve this equation. This was a good equation. So we're introducing in our algebraic expressions, equations, uh, distributive property. So here's another one for you. So see if you can take a moment to work this one out on your own pause the video, and then work it out. So I have some steps down there. So if in here we have, I noticed the negative, we have 144 equals to negative 12 times x plus 5. Why is the negative, why is the 144 in the front? I don't know. You could put it in the back if you feel like it and rewrite it that way if it makes you happy. Or if you want to leave it there, go right ahead. So pause the video and see if you can work it out. Okay, I'm going to continue. I'm going to distribute negative 12 times x is negative 12x, and then negative 12 times a positive 5. So I have to distribute all of that negative 12 to both of those terms. And then I'm going to solve it for x. All right, negative 12 times x is negative 12x. Negative 12 times positive 5 is negative 60. And then I'm going to use the additive inverse, and I'm going to bring the positive 60 over to this side. And then negative 12, I'm going to leave it right down there. So positive 60 plus uh, 144 is 204. Bring down my negative 12, divide both sides by negative 12, and my negative 12s will cancel out and 204 divided by negative 12, my answer will be n is equal to negative 17. Good question. Well, I think we've done a lot for today. Hopefully you understand what's going on. If you're uncertain, we watch the video, write down your questions, write me an email if you're not sure. I'll be glad to answer it for you. So we've continued, we've done distribution, man. That's a lot of work today. We should stop. But I see with fractions is next. Come on, Dr. Rob, you're killing me. Well, this is what it looks like with fractions. I just want to say we did touch on fractions, uh, equations with fractions a little bit earlier. It should be no problem for you because you're using your multiplicative uh, 
inverse and um, your additive inverse to solve your equation. So hopefully you should be able to solve this for the letter A. Here's another one with a fraction. And ooh, there's a secret to s dealing with fractions. Ready for the secret how to deal with fractions? Hey, I don't see a fraction. I see a decimal there. Three-fourths A, and now this is 0 0.75 A. Hmm, three-fourths. Let me get my calculator. Three-fourths, and that's a division problem. Three divided by four, that's 0 0.75. Bring that out there. So 3 fourths is the same thing as 0 0.75. So I can change my fraction, which is really a division problem, as we mentioned earlier, into a decimal. So how do we deal with uh, fractions? Here's the secret. Don't deal with them. Change them to decimals. Maybe that'll be easier to deal with because they look a lot like whole numbers. So you should be able to solve that. So I hope you understand what's going on. I want to stop right here because... Here's some homework that's going to be given to you guys due on Monday. You're going to have to write out question number 11. I want a nice paragraph explaining how you would solve that equation. We've done a lot of work today, and I'm going to let you go today because next time we're going to deal with what's called multi-step equation. What does a multi-step equation look like? That's what a multi-step equation looks like. Notice what's going on. Now you got 2x plus 2x plus 2 equals 22. Huh? Multi-step equations. Oh, more steps. So if you need help with your homework, remember there's Dial a Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380, Monday to Thursday at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Give them a call. They'll help you out. You can check out my YouTube videos at Dan Robinson, which is my channel name. Subscribe to us. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know how you like our videos. And write us a comment. I'll be glad to write you back. Please check out our latest release, PKMS Math Prep 20. You can tweet me at DRobMath1. You can watch our show Math Time on Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cable Vision Channel 15. It's a good show. Check it out. If you want to study with me or want some more questions on what we've been doing, just write me at drobinson at peakskillschools.org, and I'll be glad to answer you. So I hope you enjoyed our show and got something out of it, and I'll make sure to clean up this. This was equations, so we will fix that next time. Ladies and gentlemen, you've had enough for today. I'm going to see you on the next time. Have a good day and enjoy. Keep watching your math videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.